right, since we're limited for time, I will get going and then those running uh, in between sessions can just join us in a when they get out of the last one. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for being here and attending all of our sessions today. My name is Lisa Gillis, and I'm here on behalf of the Hypothesis team. I am very pleased to introduce our next speaker, Robert Sadi from the Stevens Institute of Technology. He's going to be presenting a session today on learning about your students as they learn in your course. Um, before I hand it over to Robert, I do just wanna mention, um, and most of you are probably familiar with this by now, but we do have a chat feature below um, for attendees to chat amongst themselves as well as a Q&A, please post your questions to the Q&A so we can make sure to find them and be able to address them um, towards the end of the session. All right, I will pass it over to you, Robert. Okay, let me share my screen and we'll get started. And we're rolling. Well, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Robert Sadi. I work for Stevens Institute of Technology where I'm the Director of Online Learning. Uh, I have a kind of a dual perspective. I'm kind of in charge of the overall operation while I also have the privilege of teaching two different courses, uh, both online and on campus. So uh, I just recently started using Hypothesis in both of those contexts. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the overall operation, Stevens, because none of these things would be complete without talking about the uh, the overall operation we have going on here in terms of number of classes and number of instructors and such. And then I'll talk a little bit more about my classes and the challenge I have with getting people to interact more, both with me and the material and, and with each other. And then the approach that I finally took with hypothesis, I'll pluck some uh, actual um, annotations out of the class and display them here for you and then talk about actual uh, future plans that we have going on. So first, a little bit about online learning at Stevens. We have roughly 250 online courses sprinkled across 21 different master's degree programs. There's a couple of undergraduate courses that are also run completely online, but those are relatively few and far between. Overall, we have about 180 faculty members that have taught online within the past year, year and a half or so. And again, it's a pretty, uh, pretty evenly split between engineering, management, and computer science courses. On the right, that gives you an idea of what our infrastructure looks like. Of course, across the top row are the main, are the big three, the Canvas Learning Management System, Zoom, and then Panopto, which we recently got to do our video library. Uh, the next two rows are kind of the the uh, supporting technologies, the poll everywhere, the Turnitins, and so on and so forth. And then most recently, we implemented Hypothesis. And that came to us kind of at an unusual time in an unusual way. It came to us during COVID at the behest of a new online program management firm that we started dealing with. So this is something that I don't know if we ever would have gotten to, but except for our relationship with the OPM, which was kind of an interesting and happy coincidence, I'll say. Um, on to the classes that I teach. I teach two of them. One of them is the fundamentals of project management, and the other one is complex project management. And this little pie chart here gives you an idea of the types of students that show up to really either one of these courses. Uh, the vast majority of them are part of the information management, management information systems major, uh, followed by uh, this PME stands for pharmaceutical manufacturing. And then after that is, is general management, which includes uh, parts of the MBA. And finally, the information systems type people uh, in computer science and also software engineering. That's what SSW stands for. There's a smattering of others, but that's really the majority of uh, the types of students. The types of modules that we have probably very similar to things that you have in your own institutions. Uh, these are 13-week courses. Each week has a um, set of slides, between 30 and 50 slides that we go through. And this is just a general breakdown of the topics, whether in the project management fundamentals course, identifying and selecting projects, the scope management and quality uh, with your work breakdown structures, sequencing your activities, uh, network diagrams probably follows in there, developing a schedule, 
and throughout the rest of these things, uh, the, the typical project management uh, cadence that you have. So the challenge is uh, keeping a lot of different students from different fields of study and experience levels. Some of these people never ran a project in their lives, and there's others that are seasoned uh, somewhat from their work in the uh, in their full time jobs. So the challenge is to keep them interested, keep them interacting, or get them to go through the actual content. Especially getting them to, uh, to go through the content because sometimes you uh, might notice maybe in some of your sections, people tend to skip the the main core content and then jump right to the assignments and then they start asking questions and it's like well that, that kind of sort of was covered in the main lecture slides and whether you covered them in real time in Zoom or just kept them as references. So yes, we're definitely looking at new ways of promoting interactions. Uh, and, and looking for those alternatives to discussion boards. Not that discussion boards are bad. Discussion boards, they've, they've gotten us very far. And down here are the six models that you would typically find uh, different people using. By far, the model that most people use at Stevens and maybe at your organizations as well is the so-called one plus two model. So you read something, you read an article, a PDF someplace, or maybe a web page somewhere, and then you go to the discussion board, you find the discussion board, and you post one original thought on say a Tuesday and then Thursday or Friday, you come along and read everybody else's postings and post one or two responses. So that model has gotten us very far. Uh, I like the manic model. This is where you see, okay, what stuck out the most for you in that reading? What, what, did you, what was the most important? What did you agree with the most? What are you confused by? And then there's these other models, RSQCC, the recall, summarize, et cetera. Um, these models are still valid when I go to using my hypothesis assignments, and I'll go into that in just another moment. So what is the approach that I take? Well, first of all, let's talk about the specific class that I'm going to focus on. EM612 is the complex project management uh, course. There were 12 students in this one, so it was small enough where I can push this thing and, and, and tinker with it heavily uh, without overwhelming a lot of students. And, and if anybody had questions, I can, I can easily uh, get them up to speed. The class format, again, 13 sessions, weekly Zoom sessions, usually an hour each, followed up by online assignments. Classes usually held on, uh, classes in this case held on Wednesday nights. Uh, there was also a in-person section I would have on Monday nights. That was the uh, fundamentals course. In terms of getting ready, getting hypothesis ready for the semester, that would involve me taking my PowerPoint files and converting them to PDFs and linking the PDFs to those weekly hypothesis assignments. Again, not, nothing terribly complicated, just a, a thing to do. So remember, you have to do because uh, hypothesis works better with PDFs than it does uh, with, with uh, PowerPoints. Of course, you modify the syllabus accordingly. Uh, I like putting uh, illustrations. I like putting pictures of what people can expect to see in my syllabus. So in addition to this uh, small text here, use of hypothesis feature in Canvas. I put in a couple of uh, graphics. Here's one of them. This is where you, I have a research article from, I believe, MIS Quarterly, and then a, a prompt. And I'll go through the ways of uh, going through these prompts shortly. Uh, but first, in terms of what this thing looks like in your Canvas shell, I have, uh, this is 11 different assignments, hypothesis assignments. Each of them is worth 10 points, and if you combine all of them, it's worth 10% of the grade. Now, this does two things. One, this is what you would call the low-hanging fruit uh, part of the course. This is low stakes, but interesting enough for people to want to do it and not leave points on the, on the table here, uh, so that if you miss one, it's not going to kill your grade, but obviously you want to want to pick up as many as you can. And uh, secondly, Here's the typical prompt. Hello, class. Now that we've gone through the topic of the week, again, this in this case, my Zoom session was on a Wednesday. Uh, this thing would show up on Thursday and it would say, now you've seen it. Now I want to hear from you. Pick up any three slides from this week's lecture and comment on them. Actually annotate something that was new to you or something you have seen a vivid example of at work, at school, wherever, and then have at it. And again, I borrowed from the MANIC and the TQE and RSQCC discussion board models that I uh, summarized earlier. I think these go well in the uh, sidebar you see in the, in the hypothesis screen. 
So what happened in this particular class? Well, I looked, uh, I went back and looked at all the annotations. You can tell the uh, annotation counts in the, uh, the red box here. In this case, there was 30 of them. I forget which week this was. Oh, yeah, this is module one. 30 annotations there, for the 20 students. I'm sorry, 12 students. And that was relatively constant. The number of annotations bounced around a little bit between 25 and 30, usually in that range. And that that was that was okay. I think that was okay for what my main purpose was, which again was making sure people spent a little more time going through the content rather than just sitting back and listening to the Zoom lecture where uh, you know, maybe they were listening intently or maybe they weren't. So what did some of those annotations look like? How did it all flow? The responses generally fell into three buckets. Uh, sometimes people would annotate something that was may, maybe a little obvious and they would restate a fact from the textbook or from later on in the notes. And Again, this was okay because I knew they were going in and engaging with the content. So I knew they were there in some way, shape, or form. The second bucket was a little more interesting. This is where people made observations about the content and tried to connect it somehow to their work situations. And this was at pure gold because then you really knew that you were engaging with these folks and they were getting it. Uh, whether or not they understood it fully or not was almost beside the point. The fact that they were trying and, and going through the content, and then we can talk about it later on in the next Zoom session or in the next uh, on-campus class, if, if that was the case. Uh, and then sometimes there was this third bucket where people asked very focused, very specific questions about something they saw in the notes. And that was great because you know, that was when I was interacting with these people on, on the most personal level. And then you know, the buckets two and three was how I was getting to know the students much better than if they were just sitting back listening to me in Zoom. Maybe one or two people would speak up and ask questions. Um, or if it's in discussion boards, some people obviously are a lot more chatty than others within discussion boards. So what exactly did those student responses look like? What did they actually annotate when they went through these, uh, with these uh, lecture slides? Well, people started talking about what they saw at work and making those connections between what they saw in the project management uh, topics, usually requirements management or making estimates and things of that nature. Uh, Michael had that in his mortar products project. Uh, Nicholas talked about uh, requirements management in his industry. Uh, Nicholas had another comment uh, again about, I think this was, um, this, this was, yeah, when salespeople overpromise and the organization as a whole under delivers, uh, we had a, a lot of fun interaction about that. Jake and Matt also made similar comments about uh, estimates and requirements management. There was plenty more. Uh, Mary, this one was a lot of fun because she was talking about a project she had making a training platform for uh, her place of employment. Uh, more about that a little bit later. Uh, Jake talking about the manufacturing projects, uh, specifically work breakdown structures in his manufacturing projects. Uh, Mike, another comment about work breakdown structures. This was the one topic I was really, in previous sections, having a hard time getting across to people because they, they would make diagrams that didn't make sense. And I was trying to get them to make uh, proper work breakdown structures where you can easily get the tasks into a schedule. Uh, Brian made a comment that Mary responded to. They were talking about uh, comparing notes about what was going on at work. And what were some of my responses to all this? I would go through and I would really want to respond to the people that took the time to connect the material to what they were seeing at work or what they were even seeing in other classes at school, other school projects. I tell them uh, if, I, if there was a great example they brought up or uh, in the case of Jake, he was the one guy who had some really pointed questions about some of the charts and graphs in the various slides. So I had uh, you know, I explained things to him a little bit more and said we'll have a lot more to say about this in an upcoming uh, session. Uh, somebody had some uh, items about aircraft product, uh, manufacturing projects, and I definitely respond to those. And I respond to Mary about keeping me posted on her training project because uh, so I figured we can actually compare notes about the implementation of training platforms. So this was kind of neat. I got a kick out of doing this and 
Uh, it worked very well with, with this particular class. And I think it would have worked well with classes that were even larger, maybe up to about 20, 25 people. Um, the reason I say that is because my on-campus section was, was over 30 people. And although it was a different, uh, you know, a little different vibe, having people in the classroom and having them do online activities like this, I still got the feeling that uh, doing it with somewhat you know, semi-large classes is still doable. So what were some of the results? All the students, I feel, spent some more quality time going through those lecture notes. And you try to make the lecture notes, you try to polish them up and make them a little bit uh, interactive and uh, make sure they're very readable. And they would annotate two to three times per week. And again, it's relatively low stakes assignments. Again, if they miss one, they miss two, okay, fine. It's not gonna totally murder your grade, but it still had the effect of keeping them on their toes. They knew they had to go back and do these things or, or do enough of them. Um, and it wasn't a big stressor for them. And no time did I get the feeling that people were being stressed out by their hypothesis assignments. Uh, students did share significant experiences that relate to the course content. I get that with Jake with his aircraft manufacturing and uh, somebody else with their training uh, platforms and various other information systems. This class was, after all, a lot of people from information systems backgrounds. Uh, students, they didn't always do the follow-up annotations unless they were really prompted during subsequent Zoom sessions. I would bring up all the interaction that I saw in the hypothesis uh, assignments during subsequent Zoom sessions. I would say, hey, there's a lot of great stuff here. You guys might want to compare notes together and, and see what's going on in terms of everyone's use of work breakdown structures or MS project in your, in your corresponding organizations. And this usually led to some pretty good conversations. So where do we go from here? Well, naturally, I plan to uh, continue and expand the use of hypothesis in my classes. I think in addition to doing the class notes, I'll have them annotate some things from the PMI website, uh, Project Management Institute website, for those of you um, that might not know the, my acronyms here. Possibly I might reduce the number of weekly lecture-based annotation assignments and, and slip in other things like annotating an assignment page or annotating the syllabus in the very beginning or annotating the notes for the midterm or final project. So there's another thing I do uh, kind of at the macro level. I meet with the various department directors. Uh, I try to do it once a semester, maybe once every other semester. And I tell them what's new in online learning at Stevens. And one of the things, of course, is telling them about the new uh, technologies we have. And by far, this is of all the technologies, all the different toys that I bombard the department directors with, I say, hey, you got to try this, you got to try that. First of all, I'm able to tell them instead of you should try this and you should try that, I'm able to tell them, well, here's how this worked for me. Here's how I used hypothesis in my class. Here is what I got out of it. And that's a, usually a very long, uh, a very uh, a good story to tell people about that because they're wrestling with these types of issues too, how to get students to engage, especially in online classes. So I promote it to the department directors. I try to get myself, I try to invite myself to their faculty meetings where I can promote it more directly to the masses. Um, there's program review meetings where we also promote the latest and greatest of what's going on in our online infrastructure. And last but not least, I promote Hypothesis Academy sessions. I mean, there's probably two or three iterations uh, every six months or so. And I have my, my list of 180 online faculty emails. Uh, and then another hundred, if you add in the people that teach on campus, don't teach online, but uh, this thing could certainly come in handy for them as well. So that's the overall plan. And I know I dumped a whole lot on you in a very short amount of time. So I want to stop for questions and see if anybody has anything they were curious about. Okay. Well, Lisa, is there uh, any other house? Well, I, oh. I do have a question here. 
um, from Shanice. Uh, do you encourage your students to reply to other student annotations? And if so, what is your strategy? Okay, yes, absolutely. It's a part of every prompt is, uh, let me jump back to the slide where I have the prompt. It is, you know, pick a couple of slides and annotate uh, your thoughts accordingly and then respond to a couple of students. Um, where is my prompt? There it is. Get this out of the way. You can also mark up a slide to a specific question. Oops, this, this prompt doesn't have the, uh, this prompt doesn't prompt people to respond to others. Uh, other prompts I have that are deeper into the course. Uh, yes, I definitely encourage people to respond to others and, and they, they do to some extent. Um, will I add extra points? Well, there's only 10 points. Uh, basically, if people give me an honest response, a uh, set of first responses, I give them the full 10 points. If people just quote something out of a book and post it or do a copy and paste, I might give them seven or eight points. Um, but everybody who bothers to respond to other people's posts, that's an automatic 10. Oh, Shelly, uh, I've already posted these slides or I've sent these slides to uh, Hypothesis yeah. Central, so they'll, they will be available to you on request. There is a question here. Um, it's asking for contact information and recommendations for starting. I'm assuming maybe for getting started if you've not used it before. Um, if you can remember back to those days when you <laughs> used it. I think they're looking for some recommendations on how, how to get started. Well, if, the easiest recommendation is if you've never uh, gotten into the product, I would recommend signing up for Hypothesis Academy. It's free. Uh, they take you through everything from soup to nuts. They show you uh, a little bit about the theory and, and practice of social annotations. Then they go into the details of how to actually use the product within uh, most learning management systems, Canvas obviously being the, the, the primary one. And then you get to do uh, actual work. You develop a piece of a syllabus after you've learned how to use the product yourself. Now you're going to show other people, you're going to tell other people how you're going to use it in your course because you've gone through the business of not only making a, a, an assignment, but uh, responding to them. And there's, there's all sorts of neat little uh, ways to, uh, uh, to take advantage of this tool. You can insert pictures, you can insert links to videos. Uh, people did that uh, without me even asking them to. In the sidebar here, you see uh, someone commented. Yes, they made a comment, a textual comment, but uh, I can't tell in this, this visual. But you can insert links to YouTube videos. Uh, pictures are a little bit more difficult. And naturally, you can put just regular URL links in there as well. So they go through all of this stuff in Hypothesis Academy. And there's all, you'll have all the contact information you'll need. In terms of talking to other people that have used the product, uh, geez, I thought my contact information was here. I, I can certainly make my email available to you if you wanted to uh, talk shop at some point. So yeah, I'm happy to do that. Uh, okay. So I felt like I was a salesman for Hypothesis Academy for a moment there. <laughs> We've had a few people bring up Hypothesis Academy um, during their presentations, which is great. Um, means you're you're finding it a valuable course, so it's good to, to let people know about it. But Time I well do, spent. it looks like getting started at, okay, maybe there's some clarification here about getting started at the department level, i.e. for meetings, as well as with classes. I'm not... Hmm. Using sure. hypothesis for meetings, as in class meetings or department meetings? Yes, I'm not sure. Let me just see if I'm not able to... Department meetings. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I never thought of implementing it that way, but it's certainly doable. I mean, you have the means, once you have your license and your learning management system, you can rig it so that... Uh, Everybody in your department, you you put them in the appropriate Canvas shell, put a plug in a hypothesis assignment, 
and say, here's the agenda for our, our upcoming meeting. Here's the slides for our upcoming meeting. Uh, post your questions here in advance or, or whatever comments you want to make. Sure, it's, it's possible whether you have that culture in your organization or not is a totally separate matter. Um, I do know of some schools that use it when onboarding new faculty. So they may have a uh, orientation or something to faculty or coming in to teach that year and they've used hypothesis in that sense. Um, but it's an interesting concept. Uh, if you are in a department meeting that is virtual, which probably most still are, um, to open it up and allow people to make comments and ask questions as they're going through the presentation. Um, it is an idea. Yeah, <laughs> again, we have the means. Uh, if you're able to use it in a class, you can certainly use it in your department. Thank you, Robert. Are there any other questions? All right. Okay. Well, Looks I see like we right. have three minutes to spare here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Till next time, I'll see you online. Thank you very much, Robert, for the excellent presentation. I know there were a couple of comments in the chat about it being a great uh, presentation and we appreciate you being here with us today. My pleasure. Take care, everybody.